If you also watch the new trailer for the 17th expansion pack for The Sims 4 and thought, what in the world is this atrocious 2010's lace dress nightmare? Stop making lace happen again, I'm still trying to forget about it. Well, if you were shocked by the mentioned lace dress but also confused about the content of the upcoming pack, this video is for you, I think. Let's sit back and scroll through the lengthy description page from EA's website about Lovestruck. And as we read the key features on the pack, we'll try our best to spot some of those red flags that just yell corporate gaslighting. Respectfully, allegedly, and in my opinion. It's time to open your heart to romance in the beautiful world of Ciudad Enamorada. Go on swoon worthy dates in the neighborhood. Your sims will be able to hunt for the best spot to try the romantic blanket in the city's gardens, dance until morning at their favorite nightclub, or even experience the beautiful simplicity of sitting together to watch the stars. So, wait. Going on dates already exist in the game, dance until morning at a nightclub, we already have that, and guess what, stars gazing also already exists in the game. But let's not digress already, we're just at the intro. In the Sims 4 Lovestruck expansion pack, players can create their Sims dating profile on the Cupid's Corner app and match with other Sims. Players will determine how to navigate the dating scene, find out what other Sims turn-ons and turn-offs are, and then cater to them, learn how to become a romance consultant, and so much more. It's time to meet your match and experience romance like never before. Uh, spoiler alert, the romantic blanket and the Tinder app for Sims seem to be super duper key features of the game, as in the two things that kind of don't really exist already in the game. Bienvenido a Ciudad Enamorada. Sul sul, mi amor. Welcome to Ciudad Enamorada, a gorgeous city in love and the perfect place for all of your romantic encounters. Love struck feelings overflow into three lush neighborhoods that exude charm and romance to make every intimate encounter unforgettable. Okay, okay, there's nothing that will convince me that this little piece wasn't written by ChatGPT. <laughs> Cutting costs over there, EA? Oh, now they want to blame me. Someone wants to blame me for something now? What did I do? <laughs> I didn't do anything. No, it's not your fault, of course. <laughs> No, I, did, I, I, I don't know about that. I, I don't. In a world designed to dial up the heat, Sims can meet and flirt with other Sims in Vista Hermosa, a central neighborhood with greenery and walking areas. Plaza Mariposa, a residential suburban neighborhood, and Nuevo Corazón, an uptown neighborhood with a small high-rise area with penthouse suite and upscale venues. I don't know why, but the different neighborhoods listed here remind me a lot of the structure of Oasis Spring, having one area for like businesses and a park, the suburban side and the upscale residential area. I get it that it's probably the smartest way to divide the different lot types, but at the at the same time, I wonder, why can't the residential suburban neighborhood have a dedicated venues, for example? Your sims can take in the picturesque wall of love and still kisses, strolling through the charming park with a little botanical garden style cafe slash bar, dancing the night away in the nightclub Mirador del Amor, and exploring open street areas surrounded by flora and fauna. I know what you're thinking. Does this hint will get new random animals or flowers and trees? Uh, I wouldn't keep my hopes up. Like, probably we'll get different decorations in build and buy mode, but I doubt the expansion will be as consistent in its environment to the point of having, like, new animals. You might even have your sim renting a room at Beso Rapido to get so much needed sleep or take their steamy date for a little tryst. Okay. A for effort here and their thoughts of adding a naughty hotel type of venues. Oh, sorry, not hotel, motel. Oh, sorry again, not motel, rental. It's a rental. Friendly reminder, we officially don't have hotels in The Sims 4. Rise and shine, it's a new day. Where are you? 
I'm looking at which window I'm gonna jump out of. If your Sims decide to take their romance back home, they will return to their penthouse-style apartment connected by streets filled with romantic stops, from parks where blankets can be set for picnics. Oh, what did I warn you about before? The blanket business is very, very much one of the key features of this pack. To food stalls perfect for late night snacks, Sims can declare their love at any number of places in Ciudad Enamorada, each with its own unique charm and beauty. And don't get me wrong, I believe the world will look gorgeous and hopefully very representative of the culture they're paying homage to. However, it seems clear to me that there won't be much to explore here apart from the usual food stalls and a park. As Sims explore these neighborhoods designed with love, they will also discover a new singles hangout lot trait that will attract available Sims who are single and ready to mingle. Get ready to see random versions of Balagoth appear at the singles hangout lots and all the NPCs with broken custom content on. Ciudad Enamorada has the perfect spots for all types of meetups, dates, missed connections, and more. It's easy for your sim to meet singles that match their style at the dive bar Laguna del Abrazo, romantic park Mirador del Amor, or even during a sweaty workout session at the gym Sudor. Oh, <laughs> they call the gym sweat? Groundbreaking! Also, just for your consideration, they previously said that the nightclub is named Mirador del Amor, but now they also say the park is called Mirador del Amor? Uh, maybe it's just a typo, but I'm confused. Plan dates that will leave your sim feeling hot, hot, hot. So this is the chunkiest part of the pack's description and it's about the Cupid's Corner app and the new romance-related mechanic. So fasten your seatbelts, drama queens, because I feel this is the section that kind of bursts the bubble for anybody who was hopeful about the new mechanics. But first, let's read more about the dating app. When using Cupid's Corner, Sims can snap a selfie and create a profile by setting preferences to find Sims who are romantically available. Potential partners will show up in the Matches tab and your Sim can hit the heart to add their faves to their saves. Once saved, Sims can add their love interest to their contact and start up a conversation. So the app is basically a shortcut to finding new Sims and add their faves to saves. Uh, sorry for my ignorance as a non-English native, but do people really speak like this? Genuine question, let me know. The feeling that I'm getting here is that the interactions that follow the matching part, let's say, aren't implemented in any other way, so it's just like meeting a new Sam on the street to then normally text them, call them, or invite them over. I mean, duh, that's what an app like that is all about. However, I was expecting you could, like, message through the app. My bad. And yeah, that's all they have to say about the Cupid's app. The main features you'll get with the pack are what the trailer shows in just a few seconds. But let's talk about how they implemented the dates. Whether meeting for the first time or setting up a sweet anniversary date, matching and dating in all its forms, it's now supported with custom ask to create a date features that make for the ideal date scenarios. These features allow players to customize their date by picking a date type, picking a venue, optionally inviting more sims and selecting the activities and goals for the date. So brace yourselves, because it smells like they gave dates the same broken facelift they gave weddings in My Wedding Disaster, which was a game pack by the way, different price tag. Let's not forget. Once on a date, Sims can connect through playing games, chatting on a picnic blanket. Oh lord, go figure, the blanket is mentioned once again. Sharing food, cuddling in the heart-shaped beds, or by stargazing up at the night sky. To add a little spice to the mix, new romantic interactions include a new kiss, a sultry dance, and three new woohoo spots. Wait, they added one new kiss? in a romance-centric expansion pack? That's insane! Thank you, EA! No, really, 
Thank you. And let me guess the new woohoo spots. The closet slash room that we see in the trailer, uh, the hero of the pack, you know her, the magic blanket, and I don't know about the third one, but it's either a rug as we see on the trailer or they consider the new heart bed as a new location. Romance dynamics will develop between sims as a reflection of the type of romantic relationship they have together. There are four different dynamics, wholesome, steamy, strained and unpredictable. Wholesome refers to two sims who genuinely love each other and show it through their actions, both friendly and romantic. So this is going to be similar to the close dynamic we got with growing together, I guess. Steamy dynamics refers to sims relationship being focused on physical intimacy. Strained dynamics refers to two sims that are still romantically entwined but are generally unhappy with each other and treat each other unkindly. So this is going to be similar to the difficult dynamic we got with growing together. Unpredictable dynamic refers to sims that go back and forth between fighters and lovers. They might fight one second but kiss and make up the next. Okay, I like this one. Sims will develop and grow their romance skill as they continue to socialize, unlocking new interactions like a steamy makeout session or neck kiss. Wait, is the neck kiss the new kiss type they mentioned before? <laughs> Sounds like it. They'll even learn how to emotionally connect with a partner or scan the room for potential sims open to romance. Now, this naturally leads us to the new attraction system that the team mentioned before. All about attraction and compatibility. <laughs> Attraction represents how romantically matched or mismatched two sims are. Sims will have turn-ons and turn-offs, personality and behavior elements that either raise or lower a sim's attraction to another sim that will define what they are or are not attracted to. This includes other sims traits, clothing and hairstyle and even certain interactions. Some sims may be turned on by a sweet gift, some sims might be turned off by gardening or fishing. Oh, sorry, hold on a second. We have a question from the audience. The question is actually from me, Lady Drama. Can turn-ons and turn-offs be related to physical appearance like beard, eyes color, hair color? <laughs> Oh, okay, thank you. Turn-ons and turn-offs and romance satisfaction will shape how your sims build and maintain their relationship over time. Romantic satisfaction bridges between the new attraction system and the existing romantic relationship level in the base game. This represents the individual sim's feelings about how well or poorly their overall romance is going with another sim. Positive romantic interactions improve it and vice versa. Interactions between sims give the player tools to understand what turn each sim on and off. This is important to intelligent decision making that will keep both sims happy in their romantic relationship. Um, excuse me, but these are a lot of words to state that basically the structure of romantic relationship will remain as per base game with the addition of turn-ons and turn-offs. And also, why is the Sims team assuming that we want to perform intelligent decision making to keep both Sims happy in the relationship? In a romance pack? We want the drama! Last but not least, or maybe leaving this as the last point is intentional, I don't know, is the romantic aspiration, which we already have in the game, but now we'll get more of it. Allegedly, because all they mention about the new aspiration is this. For any sim with romantic aspirations, romance is a way of life. With the paragon partner and romantic explorer aspirations, sims will have many paths to discovering love and connection. And yeah, that's all they have to say about the new aspirations, so I guess it means they're gonna be so detailed and full of gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> Romance 
isn't just an aspiration, with two new traits, sims will have more ways to define who they are and how they love. Romantically reserved sims will need just a bit more time to get to know their partners, it may take longer to find romantic connections, but the foundations will be worth it. For sims that are love bugs, romance is everything. They long for love and dive in head first. Love may come on quickly, leading to much faster romantic relationships, and as a result, they may be met with unrequited love should their romantic advances fail. <sighs> Love isn't just butterflies and rainbows, there will also be two new added fears. Fear of intimacy and fear of being alone. Because don't we love fears in The Sims 4 that just pop up randomly and change our Sims mood like 50 times per day until we make it disappear? <laughs> 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 Sims will have new questions to ask and interactions to help assuage <laughs> these fears with their partners. There's even the option to attend counseling. And yes, your Sims can become romance consultants and make a career out of literally loving love. I don't know if you can relate to this, but when I hear loving love, this is all I can think about. Fears are gonna hate, but I just love, love, love. As they progress in their career, they will earn new ways to promote love. For a job well done, they might find some cute heart-shaped rewards in their inventories. This smells a lot like rabbit hole career to me. I do like the concept of it, but it's kind of silly that we'll get the option to get counseling if our sims are having couple issues, but the mentioned counseling isn't tied to the romance consultant career. Now, even if you don't purchase the expansion pack, there will be changes to your gameplay via, I guess, an update. Free for all players is the new romantic boundaries system that will allow you to customize your sims experience with boundaries and jealousy. You can now define how your sims approach romantic relationships in terms of physical and emotional romantic exclusivity. This allows for sims to date multiple sims without impact to other relationships. Now, about this one. I've seen many comments referring to this specific feature and kind of assuming that it will allow polyamorous relationships. If that's the case, I think it's cool and potentially a good source of new gameplay scenarios and ideas. However, it bugs me that they're not openly advertising it as such, and it also bugs me that they are now calling it romantic boundaries when we all know that in The Sims 4 it takes so much work to create a cheating spouse storyline since Sims tend to have almost no reaction whatsoever to their significant other cheating literally in front of them. You know what I mean? They could have just bluntly said you can make open relationship and polyamorous relationship, but instead they tell you that you can date multiple sims without impact to other relationship, which is something you can kind of already do because the way those interactions work is completely broken in The Sims 4. Alright, if after scrolling through all of these words and phrases you kind of feel confused and wonder whether this expansion pack is gonna be good or not, same girl, <laughs> same. But that's what happens when someone is gaslighting you. You don't know what to think and doubt your own judgment of the situation. As far as I know, everybody loves the situation. And if you don't love the situation, I'm gonna make you love the situation. I've said it before and I'll say it again, corporate gaslighting is such a perfected art by now, we all fall for it from times to times. I know the pack hasn't come out yet and it might be better than what this description and the trailer are showing, so I don't want to just drop a negative review on content I have yet to experience. But just a quick reminder that the majority of the features the pack is highlighting are already existing in the game. You can go on dates, you can stargaze, you can define the type of relationship on a kind of 
deeper level. You can decide where you're going on a date and you can pick a romantic aspiration. I do agree that the way these mechanics currently are working in the game is not the best and would benefit from a makeover, but I find it hard to justify the content they advertise with an expansion pack price tag. Again, the usual mashed potatoes of cuts and copies from previous packs that, by the way, will not work that well without purchasing existing packs. And that's why, <laughs> brace yourselves, on the same page where they advertise the love struck features, the team conveniently adds a button that says the Get Dating Bundle is available now. Why? Well, because Lovestruck won't be much of a nice expansion pack if you're missing Get Together, Movie Hangout stuff, Bowling Night stuff and Sim Intimates collection. But hey, you can get them all for 40% off, so what a Bergen. She is... Okay, Teresa, we know that. She is... Teresa, we know that. We know that. Teresa, please. Yeah. She is... I won't be on the waiting list for this expansion pack. In fact, it's been a while since I last launched The Sims 4, and I hope that the pack will be good enough to lure me back in. So, although I'm not amazed by the features it will bring, I hope I'll change my mind once it's out. But how about you, my lovely drama queens? Are you excited to have your sims wear an eggplant costume? <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments and if you haven't yet, come on, join me at the drama house by hitting that subscribe button and liking this video if you enjoyed it. While we wait for new updates on the future of The Sims, feel free to check out my derailed The Sims 3 gameplay in a world with iconic Barbies from the 60s, 80s and 90s. Just click on this video right here, babes. Thank you so, so much for stopping by today. My name is Lady Drama and I hope I'll see you very soon.